Namo Vishnu Padai Kasi Vistaya Bhutodi Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamiti Namini Namaste Sarasvata Deva Ikaupani Pacharana Nirvise Sasrinya Vadi Paskajana Vizatayana Silabhopad Ki So we have heard this, fourth, this first 40 verses of um, Bhagavad Gita. Krishna has described Karma Yoga, the first 12 verses, and then from 13 to 40, he has given Kyan, he has given Kyan knowledge of the three modes, and the conclusion is everyone is under the modes, and all, all we are going to get out of this, of it. So Krishna, will exp explain the step-by-step -step process. And after the after explaining the step-by-step -step process, out in 1865-66, he says, don't take the step-by-step -step process, take the direct process, forget that all, and perform bhakti yoga. But of course, these steps are included in bhakti yoga, and we, we, but we have the same practice in every step, and we are going up with our consciousness. That's the direct process. But this is the indirect process, because we have learned in the 12th chapter, not everyone can take to the direct process. Some have to take to the indirect process and at least come to goodness. So the first step is we have heard about these modes. Krishna is now going to explain, okay, the best mode is goodness. So come to goodness. And how? By doing one's duty according to one's psychophysical nature. One can come to goodness that... Uh, and do it out of duty, not for some gain. That karmani patakaraste maflish katachi. You do your duty without being attached to the results. And don't be attached either of not, do, of not doing your duty. That's the same thing. Because Arjun didn't, didn't want to fight. <laughs> they became attached to it, not to fight. That's also the same. The same attachment of aversion is the same problem. And uh, one should not, not act out of attachment, attachment and aversion, because then one acts for the benefit of the body, bodily concept of life, and we have to come out of it. Hmm? So, in this character, although all work is controlled by the modes of this character in the previous verses, one can become free from the axis of work by performing one's occupational duty. As a Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaisha, Sudra, or Sudra, while at the same time worshipping the Lord through that work. Verses 48, 41 till 48. That's the first section we will discuss, but this is the second section. Lord Krishna explains then the stage where one can give up prescribed duties, jnana yoga. So karma yoga, doing one's duty in Varnasra, and then at a certain time one can give that up if one comes to jnana yoga, where one purifies himself by intelligence. The first work, and then you can give up the work because the work has purified you. If you are insufficient pu purified, you can become a jnani. It's not for us. We are not doing that in Bhakti Yoga. That, uh, but when we become purified, we can go more internal, yes? This leads to the stage of liberation where one becomes qualified to perform pure devotion service. Does the Brahma Buddha stage of 54? 
Okay. Now we will speak about the Brahma Satyas Faisa Sutras. Krishna will explain that. Text 41. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Brahmana Satya Visham Sutranam Samparantapa Karmani Pravi Bhaktani Svabhava Prabhava Gunai Translation Brahmans, Satyas, Vaisha Sudras, they are distinguished by the qualities born of their own nature in accordance with the material modes or chastisers of the enemy. So, Shatur Vidamaya system, Krishna said, I created this Farnasham according to Karma Guna, one's work under the Gunas, than that one's material nature. 42. The, these are the Brahmins. Samo Tamasta Pacha Chansanti Nariyava Mevasa Jana Vishana Mastakyam Brahmakarva Svavavacham So, translation. Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom, religiousness, these are the natural qualities by which the Brahman works. Now we will look at what Srila Prabhupada says about it. Okay, one is about the Brahmins. We have two quotes. You'll find these four classes of living entities everywhere, according to the three modes. And be below the fourth class, there is the fifth class, Panchama. Now they want a classless society. There cannot be a classless society. As soon as long as you are in the material world, there must be classes. It's nat nature's arrangement. Even amongst birds, there is a class of birds known as crows and others, and other called swans. The swans will try to reside in a place where there is clean water, flowers and good trees. They will flock there. Birds of a feather flock together. The crows will go to a place where there is garbage and enjoy there. So there is a division in taste. But in the human form of body, although there is not real division, one can be raised to a higher position by this Krishna conscious movement. As far as this material body is concerned, you cannot change the quality. So, there are nine qualifications of for the Brahmins. Similarly, there are seven qualifications for Chatyas. For the next verse, verse 43, and three for the Vaishas, Ksigorek, Shabani, and Vaishkamas, Vavavacham. And for the Sudras, only Parishayatmakam Karyam Sudra Karma is only labor service to the other classes. Now, the qualities here go about describes these qualities of the Brahman. Very interesting. It's long, but it's good to read it. Samo, controlling the senses. One should be trained not to be dictated by the senses, but be master of them. 
that is called Sama. And Dhamma, the mind is dictating something. You should not be carried away by the dictation of the mind, but the mind should be carried by your dictation. You should tell the mind what to do, not listen to your mind. That is called Dhamma. Not that you remain a servant of the senses, because you are born into a Brahman family, you remain a Brahman. That is a miscalculation. That is not allowed. Therefore, Krishna says, Samu tapas tapa. Tapa austerity. How can this Samu tama be practiced without tapasya? One of our godbrothers went to London to preach in London, and Lord Zetland was talking with him and saying, Goswamiji, can you make, make me a Brahmin? So he said, yes, why not? You give, you, you give up these four habits. And he said, it's impossible for us. He said clearly, it's impossible. This is our life. But at the present moment, hundreds and thousands of boys are giving up this practice. That is called tapasya. Hundreds and thousands have agreed. I've not bribed them. I'm a poor Indian, but they have agreed. <laughs> and so some cleanliness. As we learned in chapter 16, cleanliness means in mind and body and also in dealings. Srimad Bhagavad 10, 5, 3, Mother Daritri said, now the Kali Yuga has come. I'm very disturbed that people are losing their original qualities. These qualities do not need to be acquired. These qualities are there, but they are covered just like a serpent knife. The cutting power is there. But when it is covered by dirt, it does not cut. This is due to our material contamination. Therefore, we have to revive that sharpness. That is the Krishna conscious movement. If one is actually Krishna conscious, then these qualities will be visible in that person. O King, by the passing of time, land and other material positions are purified by bathing. The body is purified, and by being cleansed, unclean things are purified. By purificatory ceremonies, birth is purified. By austerity, the senses are purified, and by worship and charity offered to the Brahmins, material positions are purified. By satisfaction, the mind is purified, and by self-realization of Krishna consciousness, the soul is purified. So, yeah. Austerity purifies the senses. That uh, charity, one gets rate of funds. Uh, attachment to material op oppositions by giving them, them away. That, uh, yeah. Okay. Shantir. That's another quality of a Brahmin is tolerance. I'm accustomed to love my son as the body. So if he dies and someone, someone, somebody is crying, that does not mean he's a fool but this is material affection. So Krishna advises that Ksanti Titiksa, tolerance, Bhagavad Gita 2.14. Yes, I understand that there are pains and pleasures like that, but I have to be tolerated, not to be disturbed. We have to execute the business of Krishna consciousness. If there is any trouble, you must, you must know no happiness exists because this is material. It comes, it will go. So for the time being, don't be mad after happiness and don't be mad after mis miseries. Aramapayina, they come and go. Then Archava, very simple. What is the opposite? Duplicity is a very bad qualification for spiritual advancement. We have a tendency for cheating because everyone is a conditioned soul. That should be minimized. That is called Archava. Archava means Satrata and viraktata, detachment. The whole system is attachment from matter. And if we are slightly attached to this material life, we have to accept his body, any kind of body, this body or that body. There are 8,400 types of bodies. 
Therefore, this paracha, Pirektata, detachment from matter, is the whole basic principle for spiritual realization. That um, now a little further here, Kyanam, full knowledge. What is this world? What am I? What is my relation with this world? What is God? What is my relation with God? Every everything in full knowledge, Pihyanam, means complete application of the knowledge of life. That's the practical side. Yan is theoretical knowledge, Pihyan is the practical knowledge. Astikya means full faith in transcendental literature and full faith in the existence of the Supreme Lord. One who believes in the words of Krishna is Astika, Astika. One who does not believe is Nastika. This is Astika and Nastika. So our definition of Nastika is one who does not believe in the Vedic instruction. And then Srila Prabhupada explains, these, all these qualities, they will manifest in the body of a Vaishnava, a devotee. Because Brahma, Brahman, this Brahman realization is a stage of coming to a devotee, a Vaishnava. So if we come, if our heart is purified, we go to Anartha Nivriti, purification of the heart, and then Nishta is liberation. At that moment, we, the devotee has, has uh, realized all these quali qualities of a Brahmin. That, uh, but then he goes beyond it. He starts to develop further qualities of a devotee. That, uh, that, so that is to be understood. A, dev a devotee is higher than a Brahmin if his heart is purified, then he's higher than a man. And there was that meeting with Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Maharaj. He was invited. Uh, well, his father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, was invited to speak to an assembly of Brahmins. And the topic was, who is eligible to worship the Salagam Shila? That um, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur was too sick, and I said to his son, You go. So he, he went to the meeting and uh, he, he started to, uh, to glorify the college of the Brahmins in the beginning. Everyone felt good, <laughs> just thinking themselves as Brahmins. But then he started to say, Yes, that. Uh, that how the Vaishnava is higher than the Brahman. That, uh, and there were many people there listening, not only Brahmins, and they were so impressed by his presentation that they, they wanted to, to, to bait his lotus feet. And anyway, there's a whole story. But, uh, but the uh, Smarta Brahmins or the caste Brahmins, they were not so happy, not so happy because they had a mono monopoly of, of the religion and, and, and all their Kamakamakanda rituals and so on. And he was preaching against that. And he said, and he said, yes, everyone wears the and what goes that that's in the Bhagavatam. Everyone wears the qualities of a Brahman is designated as a Brahman, is designated as a Brahman. And that's in a verse from the ninth canto that we knew this shirt. Anyway, forgot the Sanskrit, but one wears the qualities of one of the social orders by quality belongs to that social order. So, therefore, uh, it created a, a rift between him and the Smarta Brahmins who, who decided to trouble him, murder him. But he didn't care. That, uh, but then, later, that conflict, that rift, 
deepened because he started to give Brahman initiation to devotees who were not from Brahman, uh, from Bra not birth, not not Brahmins by birth, and that was unheard in India at that time. That uh, and in in the nineteen twenties, uh, when uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj was going on parikram with, with, the, with his disciples, disciples in uh, Navad Mandal. Then they were attacked by ruffians who were paid by the Swarta, Smarta Brahmins and so many things. That uh, So that, but then later, Prabhupada, he started, he took that same principle because Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvata Maharaj by that prepared the path for, Prabh for Prabhupada. Prabhupada to give Brahman in initiation to Westerners. That was new, but that, that, that was based on the practice of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Maharaj who gave initiation to, the, to everyone who was the, had the qualities of a Brahman. That, uh, but then Prabhupada, he gave Brahman initiation to Westerners and he, he gave Brahman initiation to women unheard of. Unheard of. And that, that, and that drift is not ex still existing. That, uh, especially the pandas in I think in Jagannath Puri and so they are, they are, they, are, they come up. Uh, Swamiji has ruined Hinduism, <laughs> but this is based on the scripture, that, that principle. And the Smarta Brahmins, they just want money, that's all. They want uh, to execute their profession and get the monopoly, because if ever if one becomes a Vaishnava, then no karma can retails anymore, no income anymore. And that was the same thing with, with, with Balamaraj and Sukacharya. Sukacharya said to Balamaraj, don't give this dwarf anything. He will take three steps and you will lose everything. That, uh, but uh, Balamaraj is reply. Uh, was as such that he indicated a bona fide spiritual master should instruct the disciple to give everything to Krishna and you are you are instructing the opposite so I reject you and Balima, and then of course the words of Sukacharya became true he lost everything and he was he was arrested and so it looked very bad for Bali Maharaj. But then uh, the dem demigods came to pray and and uh, Brahma came. He's he's been punished, you know. You please release him. <laughs> anyway, but then of course Bali Maharaj got the the he, he, he was moved to this sub. Terrarian uh, planet Sutal, which was more op opulent than the, which was more opulent on the heavenly planets, then, and and Vamadev became his his uh, doorkeeper. Krishna became his doorkeeper. Anyway. This is just a few, some background. Gracharya himself then glorified the holy name of Vaman Mahadev after. Yeah, uh, after that, Vaman Dev had to talk with Sukacharya, yeah. and, and, and he had to admit that uh, it was not appropriate for yeah. it. Uh, no. And he glorified there yeah, that uh, he understood to Vaman Dev. Okay, so the Brahmins. The Chatyas. The Chatyas, verse 43. 
Sayam teotriti daksham yudishap apalayanam dhanam isvara bhavasya kshatram karma svabhavacham. Hell is power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, generosity, and leadership are the notable qualities of work for the Kshatriya. And this was in, in uh, yeah, the 1940s or something, 1930s even. A Persian king came to visit England and uh, he had some followers, some servants with him and and he was a king, he had his Ishvarabhav that uh, they were very strong kings that uh, and they were uh, guiding him to the, the history of England and in a, in a castle they were guided and they at a certain moment they came to at the guillotine everyone knows what the guillotine is no no guillotine yeah. that was a practice in the middle ages that uh, it, it it's a uh, moment because we have the internet here. Just to get a picture, you can see. Guillotine. Image. Here, that's the guillotine. So they, they put their head. Yeah, they, they that was to, yeah, to execute someone, they put their, their head in that hole, and then and then you, have, you see the knife on top, and that comes down. So they come before this guillotine and say, and they explain how it works, and they said to a servant, "Put your head in it," and then <laughs> and then then the the the, the British man who was saying, "Oh, oh my." Your excellent, excellent, excellency. We are not doing that to, today anymore. <laughs> but he immediately wanted to see how it worked. <laughs> that uh, very strong kings. Anyway, that uh, the guillotine. Don't dream about it. That uh, uh, so we have here forty three. I read a few points here. Saryam, heroism. Just like Marge Brixit, it was on his two and saw a man trying to kill a cow. Immediately he drew, he drew his sword. Who are you? You are trying to kill a cow in my kingdom? This is called heroism. Nowadays, where is that hero? He's not becoming president. <laughs> How will a president command if he's not a hero? Everyone has a right to live. Why are they killing animals? As soon as Maharaj breaks so out, the rascal was going to kill a cow, he demanded, what are you doing here? And immediately to his thought, this is heroism. Anyway, more about that. This power. Teach your power. He must have power, influence. Why should he beg for votes? Give me a boat, give me a boat, give me a boat, begging, where is, where is his power? If he is begging for boats, where is his power? Formerly, the kings used to take a sword. If you don't accept me, then I, I shall kill you. This is power. Yudhicha Apalayanam. Formerly, if there was a fight, first of all leaders would meet face to face. face. And if one of the leaders was killed, Yuda means one party must be vanquished. When the war was finished, if the chief person was killed, there was no more war. So, so Yude Sapalayan and Danam. Krishna was known for his generous disposition. Also, Vaishnavas were generous. 
because even though on the battlefield of Coxetra, they would fight like enemies. At night, they were friends, just like sportsmen. They they fight during the day, and but after, they are friends, take, talking and drink, drinking together. Although he is a hero, he must be generous. Ishvarabhav, the Pandavas were Kshatriyas, therefore they needed to rule, since Duryodhan refused to return their kingdom. Anyway, these are a few examples. Now, the Vaishas. Lop. Oh, this is that man's Shiko Rakshavani and Vaishkamas Fabava Champa is a yet makam karma, Shuta Shabis Fabava Champ. Farming, car protection, and business are the natural work for the Vaishas, and for the Sudras, there is labor and service to others. That uh, few points from the quotes. How the Vaishas cared for the cows was personally shown by Krishna when he lived in Vrindavan. The cows, bulls, and cows were totally smeared with a mixture of turmeric and oil mixed with varieties of minerals. Their heads were bedecked with peacock feathers and they were garlanded and covered with cloth and golden ornaments. How to protect the cow and how to reach this community was, uh, and how reach this community was unexplained in these verses. We can hardly imagine that cows, bulls, and cows could be cared for so nicely and decorated so well with cloths and valuable golden ornaments. How happy they were as described elsewhere in the Bhagavatam during Maharaj Yudhisthira time, the cows were so happy that they used to muddy the pasturing ground with milk. This is Indian civilization. Yet in the same place, India, Bharat Varsha, people are suffering through giving up the Vedic way of life and not understanding the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Good. Ja, du weißt es, genau. Schließ fei kamen abirata, samsidim navati nara. Schwa kamen irata, sidim yata vina detachinu. By following his qualities of work, every man can become perfect. Now he's here for me how this can be done. Yata praviti bhutanam yena sarma nidam tatam svakarmana tabapyarsa sidim vinnati manava. By worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading, a man can attain perfection through performing his own work. So here the worship of the Lord comes into the picture, not just Parnasham. Parnasham is meant for Hari Toshnam. For, for pleasing the Supreme Lord. That uh, in the purport, Shilapa Pat writes. His external energy and internal energy is all pervading. Therefore, one should worship the Supreme Lord with his energies. Similarly, the Vaishnava devotees. Worship the Supreme Lord with his internal energy. His external energy is perverted reflection of the internal energy. The external energy is a background, but the Supreme Lord, by the expansions of his plenary portions, Paramatma is situated everywhere. He is the super soul of all demigods, all human beings, all animals, everywhere. One should therefore know that as part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, one has his duty to render service to the Supreme. Everyone should be engaged in devotional service in, to the Lord in full Krishna consciousness. That is recommended in this verse. Everyone should think that he is engaged in a particular, particular type of occupation by Rishikesh. Here you have it. But that's how we should think if we do our work. We are engaged in a particular type of occupation by Rishikesh. You should think like that. And that Krishna has put me in this situation to do this work. I must do it for him. 
Any and by the results of war, one is in, in which one is engaged, the supreme personality of God that see Krishna should be worshipped. The result, if we get money, we we use it to buy boga and so on, and to offer it to the deity. That uh, if one thinks always in this way, in full Krishna consciousness, then by the grace of the Lord he becomes fully aware of everything. That is the perfection of life. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Tesham Am Samudarta. The, the Supreme Lord himself takes showers of delivering such devotees. And now, so it means that one can achieve full Krishna consciousness when one works with the understanding that his occupation is the arrangement of the Supreme Lord and thus uses the result of his work in Krishna's service. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that is what it says. One can achieve full Krishna consciousness when one works, one works with the understanding that occupation is the arrangement of Krishna. Oh. And thus, the results of his work are used in Krishna's service. Yeah. So, that's 47. 47 verse 47 is a verse which occurs twice in Bhagavad Gita. There are two verses which occurs twice. The next verse and the Manmana Bhavmad Bhakto verse at the, that we heard on at the end of the ninth chapter. Okay. Shayasvadharma Bhiguna Parda. Paradharma Svanustitas Fabavanya Tam Karma Kovan Napnautikil Bisam. It is better to engage in one's own occupation, even though one may perform it imperfectly, than to accept another's occupation and perform it perfectly. Beauty is prescribed according to one's nature and never affected by simple reactions. We see, of course, in the Mahabharat. Tornacharya was a Brahman who became a Chatriya. And uh, Vishwamitra was a Chatriya who wanted to become a Brahman. But, uh, but it didn't go well in either situation. So, prescribed, yeah. yeah. Our duties are prescribed according to particular modes of nature. No, no work is abominable if performed in the service. Of the Supreme Lord. But when one is a Chatriya Vaishya or Sudha, it doesn't matter if he serves by his word. work, Supreme Personality of God, that anything done for personal sense gratification is the cause of bondage. The conclusion is that, if, that one should be engaged according to the particular mode of nature he has acquired. According to the particular mode of nature he has acquired. And you should decide to walk only to serve the supreme cause of the supreme Lord. So this Parnashram system cannot be applied in Kali Yuga. Everything is mixed up here. But still, we have our psychophysical nature. It may be a mixture of, of these natures in these four social orders. But we should engage ourselves according to our psychophysical nature. That's important. That, uh, let's see the quotes. 47. The Anshayas, yes, the Anshas, lower class men, are accustomed to stealing, drinking, and illicit sex, but that is not considered sinful. For example, if a tiger kills a man, that is not sinful. 
But if a man kills another man, that is considered simple and the killer is hanged. What is a daily affair amongst the animals is a sinful act in human society. This according to the symptoms of higher and lower section of society. There are different varieties of occupational duties. According to experts in what knowledge these duties are prescribed in terms of the age concerned. The four principal divisions of society, Brahman, Satya, Vaishya, and Sutra have been defined. And now there is a description of the Anjaya, the mixed class. Among the mixed class, there are two divisions, Pratilomaya and An Anulomaya. If a woman of a high caste marries a man of a low caste, their, un their union is called Pratilo. However, if a woman of a low class marries a man of a higher caste, their union is called Anulo. The members of such dynasties have their traditional duties as barbers, washermen, and so on. Among the Anshayas, those who are still somewhat pure in what they do, not in what in that is are somewhat pure in that they do not steal and are not addicted to meat eating, drinking, illicit sex, gambling are called ante Vasai. Among people of the lower classes, intermarriage and the drinking of wine are allowed. For these people do not recognize such con conduct as sinful among themselves. Good. But, uh, so what's sinful for one is not sinful for the others. Quite complicated. But for the devotees, it's very clear what's sin and what's not sin. <laughs> that, uh, that 48. Sajam karma kantiya, sadhu sama pinatiya, sarvam, sarvam ba idoshena, dumanakne riva vrita. Every endeavor is covered by some fault, such as fire is covered by smoke. Note this analogy that a spire is covered by smoke. Every endeavor is covered by some fault. Therefore, one should not give up the, the work born of his nature, for some country, even if such work is full of fault. That, uh, so, Prabhupada, in the purpose, in the conditioned state, that uh, all work is com contaminated by the material modes of nature. So, so then it gives interesting, even if a Brahman he has to perform sacrifices in which animal killing is necessary, similarly, a Chatri, however pious he may be, has to fight enemies. He cannot avoid it. Similarly, a merchant, however pious he may be, sometimes he must sometimes hide his profit to stay in business, or he may sometimes have to be to do business on the black market. These things are necessary. One cannot avoid them. And at the end, similarly, one should not give up his natural natural occupation because there are some disturbing elements. Rather, one should be determined to serve the Supreme Lord by his occupational duty in Krishna consciousness. When a particular type of occupation is performed for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, all the defects in that particular uh, occupation are purified. So if we do it with the pure intention to please Krishna, all the flaws are gone. They're purified. And when the results of work are purified, when connected with devotional service, one becomes per perfect in seeing the self within and what is self-realization. So that should be the result. The result of doing one's duty for the pleasure of Krishna. That, um, okay. The one should... The, the message is one should not give up one's occupational duty, even if it's full of fault. That uh, now, the next one, 49. Asakta buddhi sarvatra shitatma vigatashpriya. 
naiskamyasidim paramam san, sanyasana digatsati. When we self-control and unattached, who disregard all material enjoyment, can obtain by practice of renunciation the highest state of freedom from reaction. So, Srila so, 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 describes real renunciation means that, that one should always think himself part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, and therefore think that he has no right to enjoy joy the result of his work, because everything belongs to Krishna and is for his enjoyment. Since he's part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, the result of his work must be enjoyed by the Supreme Lord. That is actual Krishna consciousness. Always the same thing, the same essence of transcendental knowledge. Everything belongs to Krishna. And therefore, it's everything is for his enjoyment. And, and I'm a part and parcel of Krishna. I must help Krishna in his enjoyment, assist him. Yeah. And then, yeah. if one does that nicely, then, yes, when we satisfy in himself, there's no fear of any kind of reaction from his activity, because he has realized I'm not a body, and the reactions are for the body. Now fear that, um, okay, um, that is 49.50. Sitting prapto yata brahma tatapnoti nibudami samasinai bhagatya nista shanasya ya para. Prasenna of Kunti learned from me how one has achieved this perfection, can attain the supreme perfectional stage, Brahman, the stage of the highest knowledge, by acting in the way I shall now summarize. So the Lord describes to Arjun how one can achieve the highest perfectional stage simply by engaging in his occupational duty, performing that duty for the supreme personality of God. The actual perfection of knowledge is in attaining pure Krishna consciousness, as described in the next verses. Yes? How is Brahman being used like at the, at the first level of realization? Because about that, so far down the body lot, or is it, is it being used differently? In Brahman, here, yeah. Krishna explains the gradual step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. And the first step in realization is attaining Brahman realization, that I'm not this body. That, uh, so that's only the first step. That, uh, but in devotional service, we come, we purify our heart and we come, by our practice, our sadhana, we come, also to Brahma. It may take 30 years, but we come also to it. That, um, and it's much more effective, especially in Kali Yuma. So now, Buddha Fisudaya Yukta Dritsyat Manam Yam Yacha Sapta Din Visyam Chaktva Ragat Vesha Yudasyacha Vivikta se vilaka si yata vakaya mana sadhyane yoga paro nityam parakyam samapasvita ahankaram balam darpam kamam prodam parichayam vimucha nirmana santo brahma buyaya kalpate. Being purified by his intelligence and controlling the mind with determination, giving up the object of sense gratification. Being freed from attachment and hatred, one who lives in a secluded place, which little who controls his mind and, and power of speech, who is always in trance, and who is detached, free from false ego, false strength, false pride, lust, anger, and acceptance of material things, free from false proprietorship and peaceful, such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self realization so this is 
an important purpose related. And when it's purified, when when it's purified by uh, intelligence, he keeps himself in the mode of goodness. The swan becomes a controller of the mind and is always in trance. He is not attached to the objects of sense gratification and is free from attachment and hatred uh, in his activities. Such a detached person not really prefers to live in a secluded place. He has no fault evil because he does not accept the body as himself. That's really evil. He identifies as spirit soul. So because he has no bodily concept of life, he is not falsely proud. He has no bodily concept of life, not falsely proud. He's satisfied with everything that is offered to him by the grace of the Lord, and is never angry in the absence of sense gratification. So we need also to develop that. But that comes naturally when we hear the Bhagavatam engaged in the sadhana. So he becomes non attached to material things. And that is the stage of self realization of a man detached from material things. And this is the called Brahma Buddha. When one is free from the material conception, he becomes peace, peaceful and cannot be agitated. The one becomes undisturbed in the most disturbing situations. That's Krishna comes. And Prabhupada, in the purpose goes back to 270. This is a summary of Bhagavad Gita. So he refers to 270. <speaking in Hebrew> A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enters like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled, but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not a man who strives to satisfy such desires. If you are free from material desires, you, you are on the state of Nista, where man realization is purified heart, high stage that. Uh, and then one comes to the transcendental stage, 54. Brahma Bhutta Pasan Atmana Shustina Kangsati Samzaveshu Bhutta Shumat Bhaktim Labate Param. One who is transcendentally situated at once realizes the Supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments or desires to have anything. He is equally disposed toward every living entity. In that state, he attains pure devotion and service unto me. So, so that's an, a key verse. That describes Brahman realization. And 1861 will describe Paramatma realization. And 1865 till 69 describes Bhagavan realization. So this is, Krishna is telling here the confidential knowledge and hereafter he will go to the more confidential knowledge and then the most confidential knowledge. The one who is engaged in pure devotion service to the Supreme is already in a state of liberation called Brahma Buddha. This Brahma Buddha it's the beginning of spiritual consciousness, pure spiritual consciousness. The beginning of real spiritual life, that when we are in the modes and our heart is pure, it's not, our service is not pure. Prabhupada explained, it's like a mother, a mother gives to the little girl, the child, um, a, a toy kitchen and the, and, and the little child is imitating the mother on the, on the toy kitchen so we are like that sadhana bhakti is like that we are imitating but that imitating is very powerful we will come to the stage it will purify us 
that so the real thing starts after the Brahma Buddha platform. Otherwise, we are like that little child playing, imitating. And of course, there is no yet, there is no devotion yet. The, the real thing, you need the fire for cooking, which is the devotion. <laughs> yeah. So when we engage in pure devotion and service, is already in a state of liberation. So if you attain that stage, for a man, you don't take birth again. It's no material desire. That, uh, so in the absolute conception, there is no difference between the served and the servitor, yet the distinction is there in a higher spiritual sense. Yeah, one becomes equal to Krishna in terms of quality, Satshit Ananda, in quality. Not, um, and further, a living entity who is engaged in God's service in Krishna consciousness become also full in himself. He does not lament for any material loss or aspire for gain because he's full in the service of the Lord. And this loss and, and this profit uh, for this world soon. Uh, and he, the, the liberator so realized I have nothing to do with this world. But, uh, he does not see in the material world someone uh, as higher and someone as lower. Higher and lower positions are ephemeral. And the devotee has nothing to do with the ephemeral like appearance or disappearance. Frame stone and gold are the same value. as a symptom of the Brahma Buddha stage. Yeah? In, in that stage of existence, the idea of becoming one with the Supreme Brahman and un annihilating one's individual in individuality becomes hellish. The idea of attaining the heavenly kingdom becomes phantasmagoria. For the senses are like the serpents whose poison teeth are broken. So the impersonalists, they cannot merge with Brahman. Because the soul cannot be cut into pieces. It's eternal always. It cannot be cut, it cannot be destroyed, it cannot be slain in Bhagavad Gita. So it cannot join, merge with Brahman. What does it mean, merging with Brahman? The soul becomes situated in Brahman. Like a green parrot is situated in a green foliage of a tree. It's still there, you can see it, but it's still there. But uh, the world is miserable for the materially infected person, but for a devotee, the entire world is as good as Vaikuntha, the spiritual sky. So that happens when you come to the Brahman realization. You see the material world as Vaikuntha. Because you are on the spiritual platform, you realize you are not this body, the spirit soul. But... Um, the highest personality in this material universe is no more significant than an ant for a devotee. <laughs> Interesting. Such a stage can be achieved by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya who preached pure devotion service in this age. Text. Yeah. But then after Brahman, what is important? understanding who Krishna is to advance further. So Krishna says hereafter, that, uh, when one can understand me as I am the Supreme Personality of God, it only by devotion and service. When one is in full conscious of me by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. So Krishna is saying, oh, Brahman realization is not sufficient. You can go to Brahman, to the Brahma Jyoti, but you must enter Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. And there you have to show your passport and your visa. Your visa is devotion. That if there is no devotion, you don't enter. That... Uh, and to get that devotion, one must know Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead and his plenary posts cannot be understood by mental speculation. 
No, but I know the vote is. If anyone wants to understand Supreme Personal Devotee, he has to take the pure devotion service under the guidance of a pure devotee. Otherwise, the truth of the Supreme Personal Devotee will all, always be hidden. University degrees are not helpful. Devotional service is there, and as long as devotional service are, uh, exists, there must be God. The devotee and the purpose of devotional service. Such knowledge is never vanquished even after liberation. Liberation involves getting free from the concept of material life. In spiritual life, the same distinction is there, the same individuality is there, but in, but in pure Krishna consciousness. For instance, a green bird enters a green tree, not to become one with the tree, but to enjoy the fruits of the tree. But, uh, okay. After attaining the attainment of the Brahma Buddha stage of freedom for material conceptions, devotional service begins by one's hearing about the Lord. When one hears about the Supreme Lord, automatically the Brahma Buddha stage develops and material contamination, greediness, and sense enjoyment disappears. So that's the process of bhakti. You hear about Krishna and all these qualities to attain the Brahma Buddha stage will develop in you. As lust and desires disappear from the heart, it becomes more attached to the service of the Lord, and by such attachment, it becomes free from material contamination. In this, that state, he can understand the Supreme Lord. After liberation, the process of devotional service continues. Actual liberation is getting free from misconceptions of life. The misconception that I'm this body, the misconception that I'm just Brahman, but who is this Brahman? It's a servant of Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna. And we need to serve Krishna with devotion. In the purport, it said, impersonalists generally give the example of the river flowing into the ocean and merging. This may be a source of happiness for the impersonalist, but the personalist keep, keeps his personal individuality like an aquatic in the ocean. We find so many living entities in the ocean. If we go deep, surface acquaintance with the ocean is not sufficient. One must have complete knowledge of the aquatics living in the ocean depths that uh, let's see now um, so we have heard this first one has to one to do one's duty not the duty of others one who works to satisfy the the Lord, by performing one's occupational occupation, even if it's faulty, one will not suffer any reaction. That's important. Yeah. One should not give up one's prescribed duties because all the effects of such work become purified by engaging in the Lord's service. One whose only happiness lies in serving the Lord is actually renounced and has attained the stage of attained the perfectional stage of yoga. With a purified intelligence, a person accepts his position as Brahman and remains always in goodness, completely detached from sense gratification. The Brahma Buddha stage of self realization is the beginning of pure devotional service. In such a stage, the devotee is always joyful because he has no doubt other than Krishna. Being satisfied in devotional service, he does not desire material enjoyment. He sees all beings equally because he has nothing to do with ephemeral appearances. Such realization is achieved by the mass of Lord Chaitanya, who creates pure devotion service in this age. Krishna reveals himself only to one who performs pure devotion service under the guidance of a pure devotee. So that is this section. Any question? Okay. Let's, yeah, you have a question, keep it. Let's take a break, a break till quarter past 12. Thank you. Oh, my God, not him on the shelf, she knows, lamps like that. Sexual meditum, you know.
तस्मै श्री गोवे नम नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पुष्टाय भूतले श्रीमाते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वत देवे गौरवाणि पुछावने निर्विशेषा सुन्यवादे पश्चाय सुतायने शिलापाव पाद के so after explaining the importance of the voice and service for understanding him krishna describes how one can overcome all obstacles by depending on him and working under his protection he next explains more confidential knowledge of the super soul and then the most confidential knowledge of surrender to him by becoming his devotee Okay, text fifty six. Matpasada Abapnati, Though engaged in all kinds of activities, my pure devotee under my protection reaches the eternal and imperishable abode by my grace. That uh, working on the Krishna's protection. So we have heard that before, that how to work on the Krishna's protection 3.30, Parvat Gita. And but now, in the purport, to be free from material con contamination, a pure devotee acts under the direction of the Supreme Lord or his representative, the spiritual master. He's always 24 hours a day, 100% engaged in activities, under the direction of the Supreme Lord, is, is eventually placed in the transcendental abode, Krishna Loka. That, uh, so, uh, in the next verse, Krishna will, that, uh, will tell how to work on his protection that uh, so because Krishna said if you work under my protection then you will become purified you get to my eternal abode but now in 57 he says Sita Sarasava Karma Ni Mai Sanyasya Mat Prabhudi Yoga Mupashita Mat Sita Satutam Tata Bhava so how to work under his, uh, his protection in all activities, just depend on me and work always under my protection. In such devotion and service, be fully conscious of me. In, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada explains one, one must learn to act only to satisfy the spiritual master and Krishna by following their, in, 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 their instructions with complete dependence on Krishna. So that is the essence. So, Srila Prabhupada said, and that is a phrase he quotes many times in lectures also, when one acts in Krishna consciousness, he does not act as the master of the world. Just like a servant, one should act fully under the direction of the Supreme Lord. A servant acting on behalf of the Supreme Master is unaffected by profit and loss. You remember the example of the cashier in the bank who gets receives money, pays out money, but it's from the bank, so not affected. So, so when when Krishna is not present, how should one act? And that's a very important phrase. If one acts according to the direction of Krishna in this book, as well under the guidance of the representative of Krishna, the result will be the same. That, uh, good. 
Den det går matt bara. Matt bara. Majsanyasya matt bara. Matt bara under my protection. This is very important in this verse. It indicates that one has no goal in life, save and accept acting in Krishna consciousness just to satisfy Krishna. And while working in that way, one should think of Krishna only. I've been appointed to discharge this particular duty by Krishna. Again, the same thing. I should think I've been put in that situation and I've been appointed to discharge this particular duty to Krishna. So one should, however, note that after doing something whimsically, he should not offer the result to the Supreme Lord. One should act according to the order. So that, that phrase, one should, however, note that after doing something whimsically, he should not offer the result to the Lord. We are in the 16th chapter. 16th chapter at the end. Second last verse, I think. That... Uh, hmm. Yeah, the word karma card is very significant. A person who knowingly violates the rules, acts in lust, he knows it's forbidden. So this is called acting whimsically. He knows that this should be done, but still he does not do it. He's acting whimsically. So that's um, a warning. We should not act whimsically that... Uh, and offer and then offer it to the Supreme Lord. One should act according to the order of Krishna. That is a very important point. The order of Krishna comes to the civilic succession from the bona fide spiritual master. Therefore, the spiritual master's order should be taken as the prime duty of life. If one gets a bona fide spiritual master and acts according to his direction, then one's perfection of life is Chris, in Krishna consciousness is guaranteed. Good. So now Krishna, and he does that a few times in the Bhagavad Gita. If you do this, you have one result. If you do if and if you don't do that, you have another result. And that we have heard that before in the in, in was it in at the end of the fourth chapter, the end of the fourth chapter, mm -hmm. yeah, a faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge, having achieved it quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace so that's a faithful man but um but the ignorance and faithless person next verse who doubt revealed scripts do not attain god consciousness they fall down for the for the doubting soul there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next so if one does one thing it's as faith and faithless different results krishna gives here that uh, yeah yeah it's also another place where he does it but here if 55 58 i mean matsita sarva durhani mat prasada tarishasi tasitvam ahankaran nasushasi vinakshati if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act to false evil, not hearing me, you will be lost. But, uh, I think in the sixth chapter, it says a similar thing. In the middle of the chapter, that is six. Yeah. 
Yeah. Six thirty. For one who sees me everywhere and sees me every everything in me, I'm never lost. No is he ever lost to me. That uh, that's what Krishna said before. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. By my grace, he says. If, however, you do not walk in such consciousness, but act to false ego not hearing me, you will be lost. The foolish cannot understand this great freedom of from all anxiety. For when you act in Krishna consciousness, the Lord becomes the most intimate friend. He gives himself to his friend who is devotedly engaged, working 24 hours a day to please the Lord. Therefore, one should not be, no one should be carried away by the false ego of the body concept of life. One should not falsely think himself independent of the laws of material nature or free to act at the end. One should note very carefully that when one is not active in Krishna consciousness, is losing himself in the material whirlpool in the ocean of birth and death. So there is nothing between one is Krishna conscious of one one is in the whirlpool of material existence. So we have to be always Krishna conscious. No conditioned soul actually knows what is to be done and what is not to be done. But the person who acts in Krishna conscious is free to act because everything is prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual mass. He's free to act that the conditioned soul is not free to act. It's the conditioned soul has to follow the dictations of material nature. That it means he is conditioned. He has to satisfy his mind, his senses, his family members, and so on and so on. It's without end. That, but the devotee who serves Krishna 24 hours is free from these dictations of the material nature. That uh, and Krishna warns if you do not do what I'm telling you here, yet ahankara mas asitya, yet yosya yosya itimanya se, mitye sa pya fasaya ste prakritist pam niyoksati. If you do not act according to my direction and do not fight, you will be falsely directed. By your nature, you will have to engage in warfare. So Krishna said that before to Arjun, that if you decide to become a beggar and you become a beggar, but then you hear that your distant marriage is in trouble, still you will come and fight because it's your nature. You will not be able to stop that. But, uh, it's your nature. So actually, that Arjuna was a military man and born of the nature of a Chatriya. Therefore, his natural duty was to fight. But due to false ego, he was fearing that by killing his teacher, grandfather, and friends, he would incur sinful reactions. Actually, he was considering himself the master of actions, as if he were directing the good and bad results of such work. He forgot that the Supreme Personality of God it was present, instructing him to fight. That is forgetfulness of the conditioned soul. The Supreme Personality of God that gives direction as to what is good and what is bad. And one simply has to act in Krishna consciousness to attain the perfection of life. No one should neglect the order of the Supreme Personality of God or the order of the spiritual master who is the representative of God. One should act unhesitatingly to execute the order of the Supreme personality have got it. That will keep one safe under all circumstances. So here, see where we are. A devotee who works under Krishna's protection, being completely absorbed in his abode, in, in his service attains his abode. So one must learn to act only to satisfy the spiritual master and Krishna by following their instruction with complete dependence on Krishna. Krishna accepts his devotee as his most intimate friend and helps him to overcome all obstacles, so he has no anxiety. Not accepting Krishna's plan, one will have to accept 
the plan dictated by the modes of nature. Text 60. Svabhavachina kantya nibada spina karmana kartum nesha siyan moat kaisya vaso pitat. Under illusion, you are now declined to act according to my direction, but compelled by the work born of your own nature, you will act all the same as sin of, as sin of Kunti. So if one refuses to act under the direction of the Lord, we will be compelled to act by the modes of nature. But anyone who voluntarily agrees to work under the direction of the Supreme Lord becomes glorious. So then... The devotee becomes highly Krishna conscious when he goes when he works under the direction of the Supreme Lord. And when he's purified, the first realization he has is Paramatma realization, which is described in the next verse. That's uh, and that's more confidential knowledge, Paramatma realization. So we have here 61. So this is, I would say, 1854 and 1861 are key memorization verses. Maybe not for your exam, but memorize them. But, uh, so, when the son of you have a question? No. Ishvara Sarvabhuta Nam Ritisaruna Tistate Brahmayam Sarvabhuta Ni Yantra Udani Maya. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, or Arjuna is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated on a machine made of material energy. Nice meditation. You meditate on Krishna in your heart, and, and you meditate on how Krishna is controlling your body, your thoughts, and so on. That, uh, so... It's set in the purpose. After changing bodies, the living entity forgets his past deeds, but the super soul, as the knower of the past, present, and future, remains the witness of all his activities. Therefore, all the activities of the living entities are directed by the supreme soul, the super soul. So Krishna knows what you did in previous lives and to, to what point in fulfilling your material desires you came. And now, he brings you in the same situation in this life that you can try again. That, uh, that therefore, all the activities of the living entities are directed by the, the super soul. And many times we don't want it to, to be in that situation, but Krishna brings us in that situation. That's where you were previous life. And you can try again to fulfill these material desires. The living entity gets what he deserves and is carried by the material body, which is created in the material energy under the direction of the super soul. As soon as a living entity is placed in a particular type of body, he has to work under the, the, the spell of that bodily situation. That uh, so have a certain nature and we have to act according to that nature. A person seated in a high-speed motor car goes faster than one seated in a slower car. Though the living entities, the drivers, may be the same. The living entity is not independent. One should not think himself independent of the Supreme Personality of God. Therefore, one's duty is to surrender. And that is the injunction in the next verse. That uh, Krishna says, surrender. Tamme vasaranam gachas vavavavena bharata tat prashada param samtim stanam papsha sisas patam. O sign of Bharat, surrender unto him utterly. By his grace, you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode. That, uh, so, If we surrender to the Supreme Lord, we situate in everyone's heart, that will re re reveal one from all kind of miseries of material existence. By such surrender, not only will one be released of miseries in this life,
but at the end emulates the supreme god mm. you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode krishna promises now six three Itite jana makya tam goya goya tramaya pimse pimse sieta se sena yatasasta taku. Thus I've explained to you knowledge still more confidential. Deliberate on this and then do what you wish to do. So that's also an instruction for us. We have heard the entire Bhagavad Gita. Now what are we going to decide to do? All of Krishna's instructions are not. So Krishna says, Yatishata Thakur, as you like you may act, indicate that God does not interfere with the little independence of the living entity. So we have this independence to desire what we want. That uh, the best advice imparted to Arjuna is to surrender to the super soul seated within his heart. By right discrimination, one should agree to act according to the order of the super soul. Before surrendering, one is free to deliberate on this sub subject as far as the intelligence goes. That is the best way to accept the instruction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such instruction comes also through the spiritual master, the bona fide representative of Krishna. Then Krishna says, Sarva huya tamam buya shiname pranam vacha isto si medritam ita tato vakshami te hitam. Because you are my very dear friend, I'm speaking to you, my supreme instruction the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this for me. This is for your benefit. So Krishna announces now, I give you the supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge. So, and that's the same knowledge as we heard at the end of the ninth chapter, man mana bhav mat bhakto Always, Think of me. So the same instruction is now repeated here. Man mana bhava mad bhakto machi mam namaskar mama vaisha si satyam te patichane preo si me. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friends. So that's the process. We think of Krishna by engaging in nine process of devotional service. And by doing that constantly, we hardly become his devotee. And we worship Krishna and offer his respect. That's the process of becoming a devotee. So what's the most confidential knowledge is that we, we should become a pure devotee of Krishna. And always think of think of him and always act for him. That uh, one should act always act in such a way that all these daily activities are in connection with Krishna. And that's an important instruction. He should arrange his life in such a way that throughout the 24 hours he cannot but think of Krishna. He cannot do anything else. Everyone who follows the power of Arjuna can become a dear friend to, to Krishna and obtain the same, the, the same perfection as Arjuna. One should fix his mind on his original form of God, Krishna. One should not divert his attention to other forms of the Lord. The Lord has multi-forms, Vishnu, Narayan, Ram, Vara. That's important. One, Prabhupada said, one should fix one's mind on the original form of Krishna, but uh, not on incarnations. Concentration of the mind on the form of Krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge. That's the reason. And this is disclosed to Arjun because Arjun is the most dear friend of Krishna. And now, 66, the supreme instruction. Well, 
the previous was also the supreme instruction. Yes. Um, text fifty-five, and text sixty-five. Um, in some version, the same thing. Um, um, remember, um, the actual orange is nine or twenty-four hours. The question, not other than that. And then, like, I know the more you do a lot of service. Every day to go see morning, afternoon, why? Because it's shut up, um, the gatherings of the temple, they do cooking, they do this, do that, they do a lot of service, which is very good. But all of the people come and complain, they say they're very tired, they wish they have less service. This is too much, my body is tired. So, how do we do like 24 hours of being connected to which one? So, the work we will do is to do it. I've I was, uh, personally, I was Pujari for a few years in Radhadesh and uh, full time for some time, not so long, but I've done it for several months, means including cooking the red spook and bathing the deities and so on. And I must say it was. I may have been tired, yes, but it was the most happy time of my life. It's absolutely transcendental. That, uh, yeah. That's, it's most satisfying. It's not because the body is, the body is tired, you are not satisfied. That's something else. But I, I heard other, other uh, testimonies of devotees who do full-time deity worship and, and they feel never tired. They feel also, always more and more energy. So it depends on the situation. How about the feel tired? This? Like how about the feel tired? Like how to convince the mind that like the body to work? You don't have to convince the mind. You don't have to convince the mind. Don't don't communicate with the mind over it. No, Krishna gives you the experience from within. That that he gives you the you are dri driving on spiritual energy. But but of course, if you do deity worship and you want to enjoy at the same time, that and you eat too much and so on then you get in trouble. Deity worship is for those who are very austere. They eat very little. And because they sleep, then also very little. That, but you need a break sometimes. Not, not, uh, you, you should not do that seven days a week. There should be a schedule and it should be balanced. But uh, yes, uh, a pujari is very austere. Otherwise, you cannot do it, especially the big worship of Radha Krishna. You have 25 Brahmins, at least. You require at least 25 Brahmins to do that. But, um, so yes, we have to follow the process, the, the process also properly. But it depends. There can be many reasons for what you are saying, but I never heard it until now. You are the first who are saying me that that someone feels unhappy because he has too much, too much service in data wars. I never heard it. So it, I'm, I'm in the movement for 35 years. That, uh, and so it's not a general thing that you are bringing up. Certainly not. Yeah, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. You know, eat less, sleep less, like that. Because I see the way you eat too much. And then they just get very tired after that, and that's how they complain. Yeah, the Brahman initiation means advanced. One should not keep Brahman initiation who does not know how to balance one's life. That that's one must be advanced. Practic uh, practically, Brahman means on the Brahma Buddha platform. That, uh, but of course, yeah. Anyway, that. Uh, but normally, it was the best time of my life. I would like to do it always. But uh, Krishna wants me to preach. 
that just data worship is. If it's followed nicely, you follow the procedures of the Pancharat KVD, how it is described in the book, the prayers you have to do. It's so beautiful. It's ecstatic. Yeah. Thank you. Sarvada mam pritya, mam kam samvacha, am tvam sarvabhavyu, moksisya mi machcha. I'm done all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all simple actions. Do not fear. So, this is the supreme instruction. The previous was also the, pre, the supreme instruction. But the supreme instruction goes till 69. It doesn't stop with 65, 66. Also, 67, 70. 68, 69. Krishna will tell us, you surrender unto me, you should preach. He say that very clearly, that, uh, that you should preach, that we will hear that in the next verses, where Krishna says, yes, that this, this knowledge that should not be explained to those who are not austere, not my devotees. But it should be explained to, to when, it's, when it's explained to the devotees, when, when preaches like this, one becomes very dear to me. And no one is more dear to, to me than one who preaches Krishna consciousness. Krishna is very clear. So the supreme instruction does not stop here with these two verses. That's not the supreme instruction. It's going till 69. That, uh, so it's mat man mana, one thinks of Krishna, machai, one, but man mana, bhav mat bhaktoya, from Krishna's devotee. Machai, one worships Krishna. And Mam Namaskar, one offers respect, and then one surrenders to Krishna, to all his instructions, and then Krishna gives a supreme instruction. You should preach Krishna consciousness, then you become dear to me. So we have to do the whole thing, yes? Did you mean uh, preaching is a gate class of good appreciation or preaching with friends for everything? Prabhupada gave us a preaching movement, that as long as the goal of this temple is spreading Krishna consciousness, whatever you do in the temple is pushing that forward, cleaning the floor, cooking, cooking for the deities. It's all preaching because people come, they see the deity and so on. Everything related. But the condition is the temple must be have a vision and a mission and thus Prabhupada's vision and mission to spread Krishna consciousness. That, and, and that therefore we are here today, we are hearing Krishna's words, that's preaching. And you are also preaching by hearing, because you are, you are preparing to speak, to speak to others about it later. That, uh, yes? The Prabhupada Maharaj says, <clears throat> books are the basis, purity is the force, Utility principle, the essence is preaching. Or the yeah, particular Yeah, sure. Preaching well, is the essence of all this activity. Therefore, to realize that, Prabhupada gave us everything. He gave us ISKCON and he gave us the preaching mission. Just by engaging in the mission, we are fulfilling that condition. Very easy. You just have to push forth ISKCON's mission. And and remain on that purity of spreading Krishna consciousness. Yes, Prabhu, you had? Maharaj, there will be more than one supreme inspector. Because if there is more than one supreme, it takes away the meaning of the word supreme. Yeah, this is one supreme instruction. Follow Krishna's instructions. And these are all these instructions in seed form, 
but we have to follow all the instructions of Bhagavad Gita applied to Bhakti Yoga. That uh, Prabhupada explains us how to apply it in this age. That, yes, there is only one supreme instruction surrender unto me. And this five verses explains what it means to surrender unto him. It's good that he explains now. He, he, he could make it make made it very very short by about Gita. Huh? And, and he could have gone to Sarvatram Pajan, Mam comes from Vajan, but if he doesn't explain, no, it's definitely it he gives us the entire Gita. Good. 66. So, a few points of the purport. Now, summarizing Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that Arjun should give up all the processes that have been explained to him. He should simply surrender to Krishna. That surrender will save him from all kinds of simple reactions. For the Lord personally promises to protect him. Even if one is not free from all simple reactions simply by the process of surrendering to see Krishna is automatically freed. Further, one may perform a particular occupational duty according to his position in the social order, but if by executing the duty one does not come to the point of Krishna consciousness, all these activities are in vain. Prabhupada said that a few times in the Bhagavad Gita. Anything that does not lead to the perfectional states of Krishna consciousness should be avoided. So that gradual process, but he explains the gradual process because we are also going to that process. So the symptoms of each stage are explained of the symptoms of, of, of doing karma yoga in the beginning. In the beginning, when we come to the movement, we don't understand much, but it's good to do a lot of service in the beginning. And then after doing some service sometime, we start to study, to study. And, and, and when we study, then later we start to practice what we study. And the heart becomes purified. We go to the same things. That, uh, so every, every verse in Bhagavad Gita is important. They they spare every verse has one or more spiritual techniques in it that we can use in the practice of devotional service. There is no need of thinking how one should keep the body and soul together. Krishna will see to that. One should always think himself helpless and should consider Krishna only the basis for his progress. Helpless. We are completely dependent on Krishna. As soon as one seriously engages himself in devotional service to the Lord in full Krishna consciousness, at once he becomes free from all contamination of material nature. So that helplessness is important. Chanting like a mother cry, a child cries for the mother. Helpless. And the mother knows whether the cry of the child is serious or not. That uh, Krishna knows whether we are sincere or not. One should be attracted by the beautiful vision of Krishna. His name is Krishna, the all-attractive. One, one who becomes attracted by the beautiful, all-powerful, omnipotent vision of Krishna is fortunate. When he is attracted by the Supreme Personality of God, himself himself is the most perfect transcendentalist. The, the particular wall of Words used here, Masucha, don't fear, don't hesitate, don't worry, are very significant. One may be perplexed as to how one give up all kinds of religious forms and simple surrender unto Krishna, but such worry is useless. That, um, now, let's go back to our slides and repeat the essence of what we have learned here. So not accepting Krishna's plans, one will have to accept the plan dictated by the modes of nature. So Chris Arjun is not fighting. He will 
be forced by nature. According to how the living entity deserves any desires, the supersoul awards him a body which acts under the control of material nature. That uh, body deserves and desires, and the supersoul organizes that. Krishna advises Arjun to surrender so that he may attain his eternal abode. Although Krishna is the supreme controller, he does not interfere with the mind and independence of the living entities. Therefore, having, Chris, having given Arjuna instructions for his benefit, he allows Arjuna to make his decision. He says, do what now what you wish to do. But the most confidential knowledge is to mold one's life so that one can always think of Krishna at every step. Then one will surely go to Krishna. The last verse of this section. All forms of religion, yoga and dharma, are meant to gradually elevate one to his eternal position of devotional service. Therefore, surrendering to Krishna is the perfection of all kinds of religion and knowledge. Krishna promises to protect such a surrendered soul from sinful reaction. Thank you. Any question? Further? Yes. Sir. I have a question that Krishna told Arjuna to use his free will to decide whether he wants to do or not to do. Can he not have told him to use his free will to subjugate the modes of material nature? To subjugate the modes of material nature. That, uh, that is what surrender to Krishna is subjugating the modes of material nature. So Arjun is using his free will, and he, he will say in the next verses, my ignorance is now completely gone, and I'm ready to follow your instructions. And that is his free will, his ignorance is gone, and he takes the decision to follow Krishna's instruction. So there must be free will. It's not that Krishna says you must use your free will in that way. That is not free will. Free will is we do what we desire. That And we must have free will. Otherwise, there can be no question of love for Krishna. That's out of free will. Therefore, everyone who comes to this movement, everyone who does service in this temple, Srila Prabhupada says we should be very careful. They are coming for voluntarily. Not force them to. It's out of their free will they are coming here. And that's important. Good point. Thank you. Good. Then we will uh, stop here and we will go to the last section at four o'clock. Thank you. Jai Prabhupada.